Hello, welcome back. This is Brotail Dev. This is the fourth day of the Harvest Mouse Game Jam. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so we're continuing from what we did in the previous day, day three, which is looking at the way a way of killing the enemies. So I didn't really like the bug mechanic, so instead I went for more of a shooting mechanic so that we can actually shoot. And this goes really well with the first person uh, camera that we have, that we created in the third day. So this is really straightforward, all we're doing is getting a few variables, determining if a shot, a projectile should be destroyed, uh, when it should be uh, destroyed and how fast it is. And then instantiating it um, as a game, new game object shot. And then adding, uh, obviously we, we have our rigid body so they can move and add force to it. Very, very straightforward bit of code. We had a place where it can spawn, which is the shot point. And then set up the values of how fast it is and how long it'll last for. Of course, then we got the positioning. And I believe we need to... Um, I've already created a prefab of it, of our little shot using one of the objects. Um, but I decided that I wanted a different prefab specifically for this. I actually used a previous rock, I think. So I created a cube and then made a prefab of it. Got put the script back in and test it out. So there we go, we're shooting it. I've slowed it down a little bit just so you can see it better. So some really straightforward stuff. You can always uh, slow down the video again, like I say, every time to you know take get a bit of look at it, get a much better look. So I add a tag in for the spirit shot and again sped this up a little bit um, and this is for when the when it hits the enemy it'll get destroyed. Now we're moving on to the player's hunger we're going to fix this up so that it's rather than it's just draining gradually it's going to take damage from the enemies. So every time an enemy touches it and it collides with it and the player collides with the tag uh, enemy the object that has the tag in it, it'll do damage. Again, really straightforward. Um, of course, I forgot to put the tag on the enemy and actually create the enemy tag. Um, so I do that on a bunch of enemies that I created to test it out, and you saw them very, very briefly that I was taking damage. You see it a little bit better now. There you go, you see? On the bottom right I'm taking damage okay so the next thing is the wave system this probably took most of the day um, to really think about I ended up having to do a lot of research because I've never really done um, wave systems in this way so I have done wave systems in the past uh, on little projects but I've never really messed around with states so while this is playing out um, I'll just explain that I, I basically use states instead and states is really good, it's really um, interesting. It's much more efficient in code to be able to use states as opposed to just using if statements to control everything, which is usually what I do. Um, so I'm still getting into states, but so I had to do a little bit of research on how to do this, but I did make some minor changes through the code. And there's nothing wrong with admitting that you have to you know, go and research code just to be able to understand it, especially when it's new. Um, so as you can see, I'm, I'm putting comments to the side just to try and explain what's going on. But basically, uh, very simply, um, determining if there's a countdown and then I want to know if I'm actually spawning enemies, if the enemies uh, are currently spawning, so I can begin a new wave. Um, I also want to spawn the wave and I use an array, uh, not an array, a for loop to determine how many I can spawn and that will be determined on in the inspector, like I'll write out how many enemies I want to spawn. Um, and then I, I want to change the states, determining whether something is finished or not. And then I spawn an enemy. This will be called obviously every time I loop through the, um, the for loop. So once that's spawned, um, we want to go straight back to update and we want to determine if the state is uh, waiting. So it's waiting for people, it's 
it's, to, it's waiting for uh, enemies to be killed because there may be some that are alive or it's waiting for um, for the tree to grow so we also have a bull um, enemy is alive it search for any kind of enemies with the, with the tag and if there aren't any uh, just return false otherwise return true back to the spawn enemy and we got the instantiate um, where we get the position and rotation and obviously we respawn the prefab um, I've made a mistake here because I forgot to serialize um, our custom class variables and so I just put it in there very quickly system.serializable so that we can actually see our information within our custom class and this determines what enemies we spawn, how, ma how, how many spawn and the rate at which they spawn and of course we've got the wave countdown and we've got the time between waves Okay, then I come back to here and we need to determine what we're doing when we're waiting, when we're in the wait uh, state. Now I just put a little bit of log, uh, debug.log in there just to determine that the, um, just to let me know that the wave has completed. I could always put that in, um, in the UI and have some text that comes up, but I didn't do that in the end. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm determining if the enemy is um, alive or not. So if, it, if they are currently alive, or if they're not currently alive, um, then it should complete the wave. And then as you can see, this is what I end up with. I ended up with a bunch of enemies spawning constantly. Um, <laughs> I think it looks kind of cool actually. So this is happening because I'm not determining that a wave is ending. And, and this is just because I'm missing a bit of code. Because we need to know exactly when the countdown is going down. Um, so I just added it in there and that was a little bit of a fix. And I also added in a little bit of my own um, function here to uh, for wave completed. This will add to the next wave when each wave is completed. And then I add in a little bit of uh, a reference to the tree health, um, and because we need to know if it's f um, five, we need to know when it gets to the stage of five, and then it should end this. So it should switch to the state end. Which isn't going to do anything, but it, as, long, it, as long as it doesn't switch to any other states, it's fine. So that will end the spawn and, and everything like that. And then what we do is, I just get the spawner, I need to get the spawner object, the game object. So now I'm determining if there's, I'm just making sure that there's no error um, by setting the next wave to zero if the length is less than one. Okay, so now we got the wave complete and it's going to turn the spawner disabled or basically just turn it off um, while in the end state and what I'm doing here is you may notice but I'm looping the function so it's always going to keep checking for the, the net, uh, complete wave complete because it was in the wave complete function so it's just going to keep checking and playing over and over when it hits that wave complete for the first time and then I test it so as you can see I can shoot them and they die at the moment they're only spawning to one spawner <coughs> but we can fix that very very easily so I'm just doing a bit of a playthrough here to test it make sure it is definitely working which it is
And then what I need to do is I need to, um, like I said, add multiple spawners so that we can sort it out. And again, just a couple more tests to make sure it's all working. So the bottom left it is telling me that the wave's completed. And like I said, you can always just slow down the video if you want to look into it in more detail. I don't really explain it too well. Like I said, I'm very new to the states and so it's a little bit of a learning curve for me. All I'm doing here is just adding in a an array list, a list of uh, spawners, just so I can get multiple and basically have the instantiate choose between a random point. Okay, there we go. So yeah, choosing from random point, random rotation, um, random position, and then we're seeing if there is none available. So if there are none in our list that are found, then there, uh, then it will come up with a debug.log. Um, but I decided to move that into the start. And then I add them. And then test it out once again and see if they spawn in different directions, which they are. So this did take a long time to do, the wave system. It took most of the day. Now I only ended up spending about three and a half to four hours, I think. Um, here what I'm doing is I just went into paint.net and because I only wanted a really quick UI um, and it, I wanted it to be really straightforward so the quickest way is, for me is just in here and so what I'm doing is I'm just adding some basic UI for the player's health or player energy what is what I call it and it will also be used for the tree health and then what I do is I implement it uh, I import it even and make sure they're all the right settings and then I make sure that they're placed correctly. I do a lot of playing around with positioning of this. Um, the reason why I did this UI is because I just didn't have a lot, whole lot of time left after doing the wave system. The wave system actually took longer than I expected. Um, there you go, as you can see on the right it's working. But yeah, and I, I add in a health as well, but for the opposite side. Um, yeah, it ended up taking a lot more time than I expected, and so I had to. Um, I had no choice but to work on something a little bit quicker. And since the UI was, I wanted it to be very specifically simple. I could get it done really, really quickly. I also put text on it just so the player knows what it is. And there you go. We're running out of health. So now I know the health is working. Perfect. Again, another really quick thing I wanted to do was have a golden cube above the plant. And this would go up to a main cube at the very end. Um, this was something I wanted to do to try and signal the player that they they have finished growing the tree and they can exit the level and and what I did was add a little bit of a rotation on it random rotation and so but this was only for the seedling for now because I didn't really feel like I need to implement it and I kind of ran out of time as well um, okay yeah so that was the fourth day mainly the focus was the wave system but apart from that everything was kind of very quick this is why the video is so short is because there just wasn't a whole lot of time today well, for this day, should I say. Um, yeah, stay tuned for day five. See you next time.